Good morning, and thank you all for joining us this morning for our uh, webinar titled Remote Monitoring of Critical Combustion Systems. My name is AJ Piscor. I am the Business Development Manager, Manager of Combustion and Advanced Controls Products for Lessman Instrument Company. Joining us today is Dale Smith. He is the Digital Transformation Global Leader for Honeywell Thermal Sol Solutions. Uh, Dale is the, uh, like I said, the global growth leader for digital transformation with Honeywell Thermal Solutions. He's got over 25 years of experience in driving global safety, reliability, and engineering service solutions. Over the last 15 years, his teams have driven expertise-wide industrial Internet of Things automation, SAAS solutions, and better business outcomes across all types of industries and clients. He originally joined Combustion Safety which is now part of Honeywell Thermal Solutions in 1991. Dale is a certified maintenance and reliability professional through the Society of Maintenance and Reliability Professionals. And Dale, I will turn it over to you. Just, uh, just a reminder for anybody that has questions during the uh, meeting, I will be monitoring the uh, questions uh, tab that's in your GoToWebinar uh, toolbar on the side. So it, as you have questions, go ahead and, and type those out. Uh, if there's a natural break, I will interrupt Dale to uh, have that uh, question addressed. Uh, and then we will also reserve some time at the end of the presentation uh, for your questions as well. So Dale, take it away. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you, Lesman. Uh, it's been a, a great pleasure to work with you folks over the years and really look forward to these types of uh, events uh, as we work ourselves out of the uh, uh, the year, the struggles of 2020 to the future and data for us is the future, is uh, what we're looking at. And obviously the ability to remotely monitor and get access and visibility helps us future-proof ourselves for the next issue or concern that, it, that hits us. So thank you for your time today. I uh, really wanted to, you know, the, the discussions with Lessman were really around what they're seeing in the marketplace, uh, the visions and what some of the asks from the customer base is, is can you help us become better with our systems with uh, fewer resources and more data and being pushed in that area, right? So here we are. So thank you. Uh, we'll get into it here. But before we get into it, I want to um, just have you kind of clear your mind a little bit, and this will set the tone for what I think we can do with the data. So um, let's do this. So I want you to think a little bit and imagine if you could. Imagine if you could predict which vehicle in this lot will fail. Imagine if you could predict the remaining life of devices. Imagine if you could optimize energy consumption. Imagine if you could identify patterns and anomalies and create benchmarks and identify exceptions. And imagine if you could predict the value of water flow, even if the sensor is broken. I love that. So even if I don't have it, can I tell where it was going and what it was doing? So stay, there are so much power in the data and I think somewhere we, we can take the discussion. So what we're gonna do today is talk a little bit about the trends and challenges we're seeing, where what this platform, this remote monitoring thing called Thermal IQ, we talk about what it means to, to enhance maintenance and service, uh, and we'll show a quick demo uh, if we've got some time here, and we'll talk about some use cases. So for those of you, uh, and, uh, you know, understand Lessman, uh, and obviously the collaboration with Honeywell, the Honeywell Thermal Solutions are the folks that uh, have burner management systems and you know, supply air fuel delivery systems and burners and heat exchangers, and we've got service teams and connected service teams. Um, and some are automation packages with Slate. But many don't know a lot that we've been building out uh, in the thermal solution side software uh, portfolio. And so today we're gonna talk about Thermal IQ Operate and Optimize, but a bunch of other software pieces that continue to move our digital transformation. We're in a lot the same boat as many of you folks. How do we get more out of our systems? How do we make them more usable to our customer base? So what we really run through, so the challenges, what we really look at today are folks, whether it be an end user or a service contractor, boiler service maintenance, facility maintenance, 
I have a hard time understanding what's going on with remote assets or even assets that are in my facility. I just, I don't have the intelligence on them. Um, I can't see them easily. Uh, COVID taught us a lot about that. Well, you can't come into my facility anyway. So, um, and then when something happens, it just goes down, right? It's like the red light on the dashboard of a vehicle, right? When that light comes on, typically you don't have much time. You got to pull over to the side of the road. So we don't know until after the fact. And then when we do go down, we don't have any information trapped. We don't know what was happening before. Or we don't know what state of the asset it was in. So it's very hard. So we are very reactive in all of this uh, troubleshooting. So we take a look at really the, the, the picture to the globe and what we're all dealing with is um, we don't have enough money to do what we want to do. So reduced capital pressures globally or even regionally in, in the US here. Um, everybody sharpening their pencil a bit, right? Um, unplanned downtime is very costly to the business. We don't have that, so that visibility again, but even if I do have technicians on my thermal assets, there's fewer and fewer of them. And even the ones I do have, they have to do more. And what, what I think data is gonna help us do and what we're seeing is it's a different discussion. It's not just, I'm gonna put a widget in to fix a thing or put a burner, but we're gonna talk about how thermal assets actually contribute to better business outcomes. And if we can avoid costs, and costs are, are pretty big, you can see whether it be a refinery, asphalt, paint boots, a hospital, right, and fines, it can be very costly. And it's some of these things are typically three or four times this amount. So we need to have a conversation about how can we use the information and the data on thermal assets to help the corporation, to help the institution to help the service side of the business be better. So there is a cost associated with all of this. All of this brought up, brought to light Thermal IQ. So this is a remote monitoring package for thermal assets specific to it uh, in that space. And so we'll walk through a little bit of this here. It's only here to set the context. I don't want to turn this into a, uh, obviously I am talking about Thermal IQ, but I want you to take away the idea of data and the idea of what it can do to it, whether you hire Honeywell or not, or however you do it, the, the gold mine, the future state, is in the use of the data. And the use of the data, uh, at least in Thermal IQ, allows you to monitor an asset in real time, allows you to get performance alerts and early alerts before the red light came on the dashboard, and maybe not only hours, but maybe days in advance, so you could proactively look at it, and you can get that historian. And if I can get that information, then I can manage better. And I can manage across an organization, across a site, or across multiple sites or region or globally with this data and this information. If I can do that, then I can maximize my uptime. I can maximize better business results. So this is where the data is being woven into the fabric of the organization and you start to marry this in with other data points and you can run a more profitable business. You can reduce scrap by learning a little bit more about what that asset is doing for you. So Thermal IQ Operate is a platform built around two ways to digest data from your thermal assets. One is a mobile device and one is a desktop. We're gonna spend most of our time really thinking about the mobile device, but really the information that comes out of that with the use cases we'll show later. So what does it mean to um, pull asset information? So the Thermal IQ platform, or think about your boiler, or an oven, or your customer's equipment, is from a thermal standpoint, we're gonna have combustion controls. And the combustion controls from Honeywell are BCU, Slate 7800s, we've got UDC, so we've got flame safety, so we've got temperature, and you can see we're also rolling out all this smart and connected things coming out here. But data should not be specific to Honeywell, and it doesn't have to be. So what you want out of it doesn't matter what color the box is. So Honeywell has blue and black boxes, but competitors will have a red box or a white box. So for you, I don't care whose box it is, it's the data. And can I harness the data and maybe other sensor inputs from my assets that can help me understand the performance of the asset. Remember, this is more than just a burner on off or a temperature. Am I getting and running a good system? If I'm in the gypsum industry, am I driving enough moisture off of that? And what are the moisture probes telling me? If I'm in a, a, 
a school district or a hospital, is my boiler generating the right amount of steam? What's my condensate return? How efficient and effective? So there's waters, pressures, and flows. So it's a much bigger discussion. So let's go to the cloud a little bit. For this, everything today is going into the cloud. This is our leverage. This is the ease of access. If I can extract it out and analyze it and push it back down, this is the the exponential piece to this. So let's take a manufacturing center, maybe an automotive client with a white boiler, a paint drying system, and a regenerative thermal oxidizer. All combustion equipment, and you can see they've got some mix of these controls down here and various devices, and we're going to attach a gateway to that. And this gateway will push up into the cloud, and it's all cyber secure, so it's extracting data only. So this platform does not do control. It is monitoring only. It's the data is what I care about. I, you know how it's run and all that. There's other technologies to turn things on and off. There's cyber challenges around turning things on and off or doing bi-directional control. But for us, it's data. And so in Thermal IQ operate, we go into the cloud in this mobile piece here, and it's all into this Honeywell experience side. And something I want you to keep in mind because some of the quick demo we'll show later is a tool that you can download and take a look at yourself. So as you go through your IIoT or your own digital transformation journey, this is a perspective of that um, kind of scenario going on. Oh, actually, I can't share that on the screen, on the session, that's all right. Um, so we'll keep moving through here. Um, now, if I'm an entity, that's got multiple sites, let's move it here. I can link all of these sites, or if I'm a hospital uh, chain and I've got uh, hospitals in uh, all through Indiana or Indiana and Illinois, I can link all of those assets together and leverage those resources. And then ultimately you can go up into the uh, other level. So point of data is being able to extract it and merge it into, you're gonna hear terms data lake. How do I push it all into a central spot? And now if I've centralized it, how do I compare and contrast? Do I have bad actors? Which boiler plant is run better? Which um, food cooking, uh, cookie drying line or baking line is running better, right? Uh, which ones can I put more time into or not? So this is where the you can start to make those business decisions. Which ones of those assets are spending more time and money than I need to? Maybe I need to optimize the controls on that. So that's at a very high level. And in this process, and I, I you know, many times folks get caught up in um, well, all of, I need to add tons of sensors and I got to get very sophisticated and I got to spend a lot of money. And for the folks on this call, your combustion systems today, 90% chance what you have, somebody can extract data out of. So if we just go back to the simple burner management system and a temperature controller, which is the core of most thermal systems, you can see at a very simple level, we can generate 30 plus performance analytics for that asset. So we can do quite a bit in this instance, and we'll highlight more of these, what is the data telling me? In this example of just flame strength and temperature, you can see in this timeline, the darker colors are older. So this is plot was pulled from January of 2020, and we've got a window, about a five month window here to June of 20. Darker colors are older, brighter colors are newer. This is a scale of um, volts DC on a scanner. So as the scanner degrades based upon temperature, these are married together, you're gonna to see I'm running here right around, I'm still staying pretty good in my temperature. It looks like this unit, you know, it's got all sorts of points here, but these are kind of ramping up, but you can see I'm mostly running about a 450 degree, 400 to 500 degree area. But what's important is the degradation of the flame scanner. You're seeing over time, it's getting worse. The signal is getting worse. So it's forewarned as forearmed. Not that you needed to do anything at eight volts. You might not do anything at six and even four, but if I threw a trap or an alarm in the system to tell me that it's starting to go bad, I can start to send, put it in a maintenance program. I can send somebody out. I can send a service technician and catch this before somebody starts to lose those tens of thousands of dollars an hour. Now, obviously you can get more and more analytics if you start to get more sophisticated into the system. So. And that's what I really want to highlight on this slide here is you can do basics and get a lot. We talked about 30 there, but if the more you have, don't get caught up so much in just burners. But if you've got PLCs and DCS systems or other sensor inputs here, get them onto the, the pathway 
get them in there and you can do a lot more to it. So many of you folks today already have most of this information. It's just a fact of getting a group together. That's why we think that this thermal IQ play is a, is a quick and easy bolt onto your systems and gives you some of that visibility uh, into your assets. So real quick here, the, we won't spend any time here. Thermal IQ optimizes an enterprise look, allows you to look at hundreds of assets and analytics and drill into it. Um, I'm gonna buzz through this because I really wanna get to the some of the use cases in here. Um, there is a demo for it, so you can work with um, AJ and the Lessman team there that can walk through it if you're looking at any kind of enterprise scenarios and uh, some of the analytics that you can run out of that. And what you're seeing here is a um, just an example of some of the information run against a, a use case we'll highlight here in a second. So what we're able to do is extract stealth data and put it in front of you. And what you do with Lessman and team is they will build, help you build out some of the dashboards and the information and that domain expertise. So you don't have to be the expert. You can let the software, data has a better idea kind of thing, point you in the direction, help you run a better business than becoming a combustion guru, whether it be your internal teams or your external teams. And so this is an example of one that we Honeywell learned with data on our own. Um, you can see here, so this is an example for Muncie, Indiana. We have two boilers in this facility, a 150 horsepower Cleaver Brooks and an 80 horsepower Cleaver Brooks. They're both about 50 years old. And in uh, recently, a few years ago, we did a slate controls upgrade. So both boilers run off of a slate package. In 2019, we added sensors to it. So we added a flow sensors, pressure, steam, condensate, things of that such. And in, in that year, we also added thermal IQ. So we are now able to take these, these smart sensors and the devices and information uh, smart, uh, we turned them smart and put them into software and now started to be able to look at that. Now in 2019, something else also occurred. We had a boiler feed water pump motor fail. So it would fail. We used a third party maintenance company. They came in and changed it out. And when they did that, this thing just started um, high fire, low fire, fire. So a lot of cycling. Now, most of you know that in a facility, if as long as the boiler is pushing steam out at the other end, most people don't know or don't care as it's working, right? Boilers are pretty uh, robust. And for the most part, this is an unmanned operation. There's nobody in a boiler room standing there watching it. And so this boiler cycled for months. One of the um, engineers came in who understood combustion and boilers said, you know, not for nothing, but this shouldn't be really running this way. And they also started to dig into the data. Well, we, we now have data that we can look at on a screen. And you're seeing some of that resonate here on these two uh, comparisons. And what you saw was this high cycling here. You're seeing this firing rate. You're seeing pressure cycling. You're seeing O2 levels. And O2 levels really help us gauge the efficiency of our combustion process, right? Um, O2 ox, extra oxygen in there or, uh, is, means it's potentially too much oxygen. It's taking too much BTUs, that energy we're paying for out the stack. So what we realized was the contractor installed an oversized boiler feed water pump motor. So every time the boiler asked for water, it threw too much in. So it quenched the boiler. I said, wait a minute, I dropped too low, fire up. So you could see on an, about an every four to five minute cycle, this thing on, off, on, off. Again, nobody's in the room there, months of this running. So what the engineering team said, well, we gotta get this changed out. But before we do that, we got all this data. If we can do it, can we drop the boiler feed water down to 40%? Based upon the calculations, we can still run efficient. That's where we think we should be. And what happened when they did that, the boiler immediately stopped cycling. The O2 levels realigned. And what you had was in a long-term big picture, the life total um, operating costs, total life cycle costs of that boiler, we're no longer beating up the tube sheets, no longer beating up the controls and cycling them far and you know running it into the ground sooner, right? So we're keeping the, the or extending the life of that boiler. Ultimately, what we saw was about a 5% fuel savings and it saved about $5,000 a year. Now you might say, well, that's not a lot of money. Well, it's not, but it's a very, it's an intermittent use boiler and it's small, but think about larger boilers or furnaces 
melting systems, uh, spray dryers, you name the process in industry, you know that we, if you can make it run better, there's not 5,000, it's hundred, can be hundreds of thousands. And what we're seeing down here is Thermal IQ Operate was able to capture this information and put it visually on the phone, on a smart device. So that allowed them to see it, troubleshoot it. Then a historian here and Optimize allowed them to see the same thing. So remember that firing rate, they made the change, it goes into more of a steady state. We're looking at the pressure here and what it up and down, I'm anywhere from 11 and a half, tight spiking, I think they run it, uh, target is, uh, you know, max is 13 or 14 PSI. You see it's down all the way to nine, uh, almost at nine at the level levels out. O2 levels, you, you can't even tell that it's in there. So there is a um, great, uh, piece here, and I mentioned cost, but cost is also one aspect. But if I'm the maintenance team, I can prove out that what I found, I fixed, or if I'm trying to hold my service contractor accountable, right, that they did the right fix, I can prove it out with the data, right? We went forever with our contractor that did work, and yet it and didn't do the right work, or and so it was costing us money. So there's a white paper out there. Uh, reach out to um, AJ, he can share that with you. So it's a fantastic tool that really walks you through the details of this uh, example here. And real quick, Thermal IQ Operate um, is a, this platform here, allows you to set those alarms and pushes you through the ability to push notifications to your phone based upon the alarms, drill into that asset, and actually see real-time operating parameters and actually look at what's going on in your, your mobile device. So I call it control panel in the pocket. So this gives you that visibility. Um, you can socialize this with your entire organization. And this was an example um, of being able to socialize information and get folks engaged. Uh, and so some of you have, uh, could be maintenance teams if you're a corporation that your um, center of excellence might be in Europe and it's overseeing assets globally. You might have a maintenance team and a large campus or um, a hospital, right? That isn't always there, and uh, there it's the weekend. What this does, this tool, or the, I'll say data, allows you to socialize this information with everybody. And so in July, we had our boiler there was running, and you can see this steep drop. Now, what this was, was at around four, a little before 4 a.m., a big storm came through and knocked out power completely to the plant. So you can see everything we were monitoring here when we went back in the app just went away. So I, I'm at home, I'm in Ohio and this is in Indiana. Um, I'm all of a sudden getting, I had 20 plus emails and, and text notifications. Hey, the boiler went down. This is, mind you, this is a, from across Honeywell. So we've had folks in the West Coast, we've had folks in South America say, I'm looking at this, I too got these alerts. So what this means is in real time, a corporation, depends on who your team is, you can get information. If the expertise isn't at your site, then you can socialize it with that expert team in the next room or next state or next country. So this gave us great visibility. Uh, reached out to the team and the engineers were already on site and they said, yeah, we have to come here because we got to do a manual reset on the boiler. Uh, can't just start it up, right? So little by little, and then I caught them on the back end here, you can see the data started to come back up. So the ability to have data in real time is a very powerful tool to address some of that. I don't know what's going on with the asset. I didn't know what was going on before and what should I focus on, right? So very uh, good example of that. Um, and again, through your journey, this is something, talk to Lessman and team, they can get you set up. You can go in there and download the app right now. You don't need any permission to do that. You can go to App Store and that, but you would need them to help you look at this. Um, and on another session, AJ or others can show you um, how this runs. I thought I was gonna be able to demo, but I don't think I can share my uh, phone in the GoToMeeting platform. So I apologize for that. So um, the live version of this, what I might do here, uh, let's see, AJ, can I, should see how much time we got. Can I share a, a video? I don't know if I can do that. I haven't run here. I, I'll, I'll wait. I don't want to gum this up. Let me pause there. Any questions from uh, anybody on the call while we navigate here a little bit? Any uh, questions? Thank you, about, uh, 
I don't yep. show any uh, questions that are typed into the uh, into the question box right now. Um, okay. You should be able to go through and um, and play a video. Uh, you are sharing your uh, computer audio okay. uh, as well. So uh, okay. go ahead Very and give that a shot. All right, I'm going to do that here. I'm going to pull this up. Um, folks, We I may drop the screen off to load the right screen if this pulls up in the wrong area. So what I'm going to show you is this is a recorded video of the the app and it, again it look let's see let me know if it's playing there is no sound to this let me pause so can you see that aj uh yep i can see that Dale. okay microsoft login okay so this is so uh, a screen capture of uh, logging into this app so what we're doing we talk about cybersecurity. Um, john parker is one of our application engineers so he's going to log in the microsoft azure and then he's going to log into that honeywell experience platform so uh, cybersecurity, data integrity uh, is very crucial to any of this working. Remember, it's a monitoring only piece. And so what you're seeing here is a quick load. There's the Honeywell Experian. That's that app you would download. So we're chiming in there. Um, and so we're going to take a look at a boiler here. And so you're going to see here, and I'll pause it. Uh, we'll go back just a second. So we'll see how this loads. So what we're looking at is a steam plant. Uh, steam flow, and this is what's called a card here. And so steam used yesterday, it's in a, there's two boilers at this site, and it's in a run state. Um, so now we'll, he's clicked that piece there. And now we're looking at some alarms. So these are things we're keeping an eye on, pressure in the boiler. And I, I keep saying boiler, just happen to be the examples. Forget about boiler, call combustion system, any type of combustion system you can, as long as you got the sensor inputs, you can do it here. So tank pressure, flows, any lockout, stack temperature, things of that such are resonating. They're gray, so that means there's nothing going on. Uh, so that's just a monitoring. So now we got steam, you can see the pressure. This is every 10 seconds, we're polling the registers of those devices. So the lag up into the cloud and down is anywhere from 15 seconds to 30 seconds. So we are in near real time monitoring of a couple boilers in this, this facility via a mobile device, right? So pressures, um, gas, so we've got a, um, a glass line and aluminum. So there's glass bottling in this and aluminum uh, line. So we're making different constituents here. Steam flows. So we've got a deer aerator. We're gonna have uh, temperatures in there, pressures. Remember all those sensors, don't just worry about the burner, but pressures, flows of runtime hours. Uh, and that energy costs are gonna be key here, right? Uh, so you can associate how effective and how uh, much money am I making or losing by running my assets in this current kind of condi uh, condition or state. And we're gonna get into flow totalizers here. So gas used yesterday to today, steam flows, make up water, condensate return, right? All these things start to bode, uh, give us an idea of how well or efficient uh, my O2 levels in there. Did I have lockouts yesterday or today? How am I having trouble starting up? So what you're seeing here is now a, a real-time historian of the asset. And you're seeing all of this. This goes back about 90 days. And now you can get that information. What was going on with the boiler before or after or the oven or the furnace before I lost something or just monitoring? Um, so many ways in deep dive in there. This is where John's going to show these alarming alert thresholds. So he's going to adjust one. And you're going to see the push notification so he's adjusted here, the DA alarm. So he's got it set and you saw this push notification come in right there. And what that is, is that's on your phone that pushed in based upon the alarm thresholds. Now you are wherever, you're out fishing, you're at the store, you're working in the plant, wherever, and you got this and you got some visibility, you or your, your service team. So that's the example of what the notification can do you're going to see that there's going to uh he's going to come back to the main screen here and you'll see a a red dot uh as though you clicked on it rolled in there uh on the main screen so now you'll be able to see that uh resonate uh here we'll just scoot this along okay right there so you can see here da alarm red this would have taken you right into either this tab or right into that trend log screen that we'd look at and you can start to play around in there so that's what data does to extract it from the asset and push it to you so you can make decisions whole uh, many things that your teams can do uh, if you had less men into the 
the equation there and they've already got some of these projects up and running, they become that resource for you to, uh, to look at that. So I'm going to switch back here to this. Um, those of you in the service side of the business, I keep I talk a lot about um, end users and things of that such, but the service business has a great angle with this tool also or data. So it is mostly you know getting data to users and downtime, uh, unscheduled downtime, very important, very costly. But you facility, if you run a boiler service company or maintenance company, that's that is not necessarily a metric you look at. But you folks are the trusted advisors to the end users. You're the ones with the maintaining the production lines. You're the one maintaining and getting the call at two o'clock in the morning when there's an issue. You're the one with the boiler service side of it. So the tool and information means something to you too. It can help you um, be better managers of your technicians, of your their utilization rates, um, driving service calls, conversion rates. How do you become even better? trusted advisor to that end user or your customer. And some of this stuff even resonates with the in-house maintenance teams, the ability to, to monitor remotely, uh, keep a better handle on spare parts inventory, understand what's working, right? Minimizing those costs. So data, once again, is, is a very powerful tool. And what I'd like to do here is spend a little bit of time going into some use cases. I, you know, I've highlighted a lot about how this thing works. Um, but let's talk about the end story. Like, show me what it means to people. What are you? Who's using data, and what did it mean to them and their business? So remember, we looked a, a little bit before at simple nature of things. Flame signal strength is a key indicator for what we can get out of a, a combustion system. If I have poor flame, I'm not getting BTUs. I'm not getting heat. I'm not creating value with whatever value creation I'm supposed to do with that asset. Again, baking cookies, melting metal, or producing steam. So in this instance, if we can pull that basic data, you can see there's various trends. There's that similar trend we saw before, right? Flame strength and temperature. We can also look at and look at very, uh, outliers and get alerted on this. I run very well at a good flame signal strength, but I get a lot of snowfall here or rainfall coming out. Why, right? And now I can start to look at that. So the power is in not reacting but predicting and monitoring the predictions out there so that I can eliminate this and stay in the good tight bands here. And then others would be, well, why am I snowfalling here? But then I've got zero. Chances are if this thing's capturing any zeros, I should have been locked out and I would have a whole bunch of other issues going on. But if it's tripping in there and coming out and not tripping the, the burner management system, we've got other issues. So you can see just simple controls and looking at it, we can extract a ton of value out of that asset. And you can see here, just in controls alone, if I had just a 7800 and just a UDC, and forget about the, again, the, the color and the name, flame safety and temperature, whatever systems you have, there is a great wealth of information that can uh, help you predict a business. So here's one example of a simple, uh, installation. So this is a customer in uh, it was the in Illinois. The tech is in Indiana, so a good four or five hours away. They got a call from the site and said, "I'm having a hard time making pilot to establish main flame. I just can't get it up. I need production now. I need somebody here." So they've got a couple. They got a 7800 and two UDCs. So you know, operating limit and a high temp limit, and the flame safeguard. So Dispatch somebody now, we'll pay any costs and do everything we can. And that's fine. Okay, so Honeywell had a service tech, we're gonna send it out there now. Before he did that, because they had thermal IQ on there, they were, he was able to dig into the trends and look at everything and able to um, make a call and say, not only can I get the right parts and I think it's this and I'm gonna bring the right tools and I'm the right person to go, but he was able to troubleshoot with the site over the phone to get them actually to limp along, get started, get production going. It wasn't a fix. And he was able to get there, um, not didn't have to be emergency. And the customer was able to save emergency costs. We were able to have a stronger relationship and provide the value to them and keep them going. So sometimes it's not about the cost of it or the savings. It's about the fact, the peace of mind that I have a trusted partner that I can rely upon that did it right. Me from the service side, right solution, right place, right time. So that was a good example of a win for the customer, a win for us long-term. As I said, 
you know, if it was a pressure excursion that was going on, I can bring the right regulator. I can bring the right switch, right? Um, it, those are many of the things. And during COVID, or let's take Texas, we had some call outs uh, from a channel partner with all of the freezing down in uh, the Houston area, a lot of the sensing line and actuators and some of the refineries had so much moisture in there that it froze and broke the actuator. That's fine, I'll just get a new actuator. Well, getting a new actuator when you got called out to a site in the middle of millions of people and probably thousands of locations with frozen busted actuators, was a problem, you wouldn't be able to get the replacement parts. But if you knew before shipping somebody there, you might be able to source parts in other areas that aren't hotbeds and show up with the right parts. So that was an example where they were able to use some information and actually get that rolling. This is an example from a customer that says, without this tool or information, I would not have found the flame out issues until they had occurred. That's that red light on the dashboard. So here's an example, and this is just the text. So this is a system with slate on it. It's got two scanners sitting in here. And what he was getting notifications for on this north unit, the number two scanner kept saying weak flame. So weak flame, he looks and goes into the app and says flame signal one and two. We saw that one was strong at seven. Remember, we're doing the scale of zero to 10. So I'm still floating in a good range, but we, number two was weak. So I'm at a number one. So he was able to look at the firing rate, flow rates, temperatures, air fuel ratio, everything in his, in his pocket there. And he was pretty sure that it was just a dirty lens. So he calls the electrician, electrician goes out, two hours later calls back and says, okay, I cleaned it, good strong reading. He looks at the app and you can see here, the result was now number two is at a 7.4 and one is at 6.4. So he was able to avoid something, get the alert and fix it before it was a problem. So good example there of keeping production going. Let's talk about a clogged burner. So in, if depending upon the system that you use in the inputs, you can derive a lot. And you're gonna see these colors, remember our, our darker is older and brighter is newer. You can see here, that most of this stuff looks the same. I, I wouldn't have known just running a unit, I wouldn't have known that anything was creeping off. So this is an example of a air fuel ratio that we were looking at was drifting and we saw you take airflow and fuel flow and they are pretty much there, but the newer one, you can see this slight degradation here is sliding down. So the more current ones, I'm losing some flow. So I come over here and I was able to separate out fuel flow. Everything kind of stays online, but you're seeing the air flow when I come over to this side, actuator, actual flow versus the actuator measured position, you can see I'm sliding off over a three month window. And so what we started to look at was, um, it ultimately was a clogging burner. So the ports, and this was a gypsum kettle, and so all of they, they go through clogging, but it was a challenge. So here's another one. Uh, a more drastic scenario, you're seeing here, all of a sudden out of the blue, we get into this scenario where we've got the air fuel ratio takes off. I'm way up there, excess air picks up my, and I'm following the same curve, but it just kind of did a, a jump here. So, and this was over a two month period on a Vortometric burner. And what you're seeing, we said, well, let's take a look at the burner and the, the burner curve still looks about the same, not bad there. Um, you know, the, it's up to the close to the upper end of the fire rate. So everything looked okay. And when we started to look at scanners, and scanners are a great indicator of a lot of things going on, we saw two jumps. We've got our kind of a, a low fire position and a high fire position. We're kind of hanging here, but you're seeing a degradation here in number two. This has two scanners on it. Here, you're seeing not, and this went from eight down to four. So you're seeing a big jump drop down in here. Here I'm at 8 to 6.8, right? So though you, it looks, the scales are different, it's not as much of a drop, a little bit, but not so much. And what we ultimately found was when this system was commissioned um, and the combustion air ducts and the mass airflow ducts that are in there, it was commissioned with a leaking expansion joint. And nobody could hear it and know that it was on the backside. So it was losing air. 
Then through one of the maintenance turns, the team went around, was going around and they found that it was loose. So they tightened everything up. And what you're seeing is the actual movement of now getting more combustion air. And that was the movement. But because we could see that and track that, it's now a visual cue. So if we would have seen this slid before, we could have sent somebody out. So this was more of a kind of a, a backwards looking a solution, but we could validate what actually occurred and why. And one or two examples here. This is a, many times I mentioned hard light offs and, and problems. You know, it's one thing to be running, but many times it's getting it up and running and getting it coming down is not only the hardest part, but many times when it's the unsafest times, kind of like flying a plane, right? The worst time is taking off and landing. Well, in this instance, what you're seeing here, and we're tracking all sorts of things, but the, what I want you to focus on is lockouts and light off attempts. And so what we're seeing here is this is one, two, 10, 20. This is up to 20 lockouts in a day, 20 light off at 20 or more than 20. So what this showed us was they were having a very hard light off. And you can see it was going for a period of time where many times they're spending a lot here. And we could see they would lock out, but they have one more attempt where it actually got up and running. Now, it was very interesting because over a one and a half month period, this was a brand new system. We're, and everybody's poking around and saying, well, what's going on? Well, we started digging into the air fuel ratio and you can see it's really just blurring all over the place. There's just like gradient. So we took, that was the fuel flow and airflow on there. Now we looked at the um, firing rate and excess air and you can see here, well, it kind of is following a curve. So other than the being all over the place, it's kind of in a movement there. But if you dug into it a little bit more, there's actually three curves in here when you we kind of poked into the data a bit. And what was happening is it was taking them 15 to 20 attempts. They were losing a couple hours a day just trying to get the system up and running. So, so many light off attempts. And one of the, the challenges here, not only was it the wasted time, they were losing production, but the way they were brute force load launching this, so to speak, we're probably wrong term, but they needed to get to 20 or 30% firing rate before this thing would light. It really needed to be down here. They couldn't get it lit. And what was ultimately the challenge was dirty mixing valve, lack of maintenance, and really running the unit in manual versus automatic. So the data was able to help us say there was an, the customer look at the investment in the, the process, look at the culture of what they were doing to accept the new technology and help train them on it. But then also they changed their maintenance practices so they were not living through this kind of scenario. Nobody wants to see this kind of thing. You just want to push the button, get up and running, warm up and get into making production. So uh, just some small quick examples of a way people can use data to troubleshoot something. You just need to grab it. So imagine these thermal solutions or these thermal systems, I should say, imagine if you could get that data into your hands. Most of it is probably already sitting inside of your facilities, you just need to be able to grab it. So when, think about it, imagine if you had a big mountain to climb and that you could get over it. We'd love to uh, chat with you a bit. Uh, Honeywell's got a bunch of information here, but uh, your, your real first point of contact should be Lessman. Talk to AJ, he's done some fantastic things with not only just combustion controls in his background, that team there, uh, but how to provide solutions to the marketplace. So um, please reach out to AJ. And with that, I want to thank you for your time today and uh, open it up to questions or anything else we can do for you. Thank you very much, Dale. Um, I uh, wanted to thank you uh, for taking the time to share with, uh, with everybody uh, the product. And hopefully uh, for the attendees, it got you thinking a little bit more critically about your combustion assets, uh, what will happen uh, if they shut down. And um, Honeywell, I feel like, has a very nice uh, solution to help, uh, you know, increase your uptime, uh, do some uh, smarter troubleshooting, and also uh, predictive uh, maintenance as well. Uh, so, Dale, I don't show any, any questions right now. Uh, but for those of you that attended, I kind of want to thank you for your time this morning. Uh, a recording of this presentation will be available on lessman.com. Uh, you can go to our training center on the website. Uh, we will post not only the link to this video, but also 
a, a copy of uh, Dale's presentation uh, so that you can review that offline and share uh, with your colleagues if you like. And of course, you have um, you can contact me if you have any kind of follow-up questions or if you think of something that you wanted to ask uh, for myself or Dale later, you can uh, reach out to me. My email address is ajp at lessman.com. And again, just want to thank Dale and thank everybody uh, for your time today. And um, you guys, oh, okay, I got one question that just came through. Uh, cost for this. Is there any monthly or subscription cost for this? So uh, there is a monthly cost for the Thermal IQ, uh, and it's really just for gathering of, of the data, and it is about $215 per month. Uh, is that correct, Dale? Or do you want to elaborate on that a little bit more? Uh, certainly, certainly. Um, yeah, it, it is a really just covering the up the uplink or covering most of just the cost of trying to transfer through the cellular networks. Um, but in that is that at mobile app. So you get it all into one. So really, we encourage folks to look at a, uh, you know, a kind of de locking in. We go at annual plans kind of things. So you're going to sign up for a year. Uh, but that's the simple math behind it. Obviously, there is a, a gateway that's got to get brought into it, um, depending upon the gateway that you use, anywhere from 600 to 1,000. So, um, but we've got, we're working with last month, we've got all sorts of early adopter programs and things like that. So, as you folks look at this, we Honeywell would want to work in collaboration with uh, Lessman and you. And we have some programs to help, you know, uh, get this going. We've got a Sirius XM model out there. Um, you know, try it before you buy it kind of thing. So really encourage you to, you know, take a look at it. We Honeywell want to get the data in your hands and we're, our bet is that you'll love it and you really want more of it. Um, and uh, love to chat with you about it. Thanks, Dale. I have another question from Chris Holman. He's asking, is the cost per site or per boiler. So Dale, you might want to just elaborate a little bit about the modem and how you can connect Absolutely. multiple devices to the modem. Let, let's come all the way back up to the top here. Um, it is going to follow the the uh, device, I'm meaning the gateway. So we'll come back to this screen here. So we'll go to the simple one. I'll we'll just leave it here. So this gateway has multiple assets hanging under it, right? So we the we can get about 15 devices in there and so a device to us is a 7800 can be uh, a, um, a UDC could be sensors and then there's many ways to expand that that ratio so we can get a lot going on in that space uh, so here you're seeing three assets on one gateway this site only has one asset one spray dryer one this has two so we've got some let's say you got four boilers in a boiler room and it's got a 7800 and uh, a pressure troll on there and something else you're probably going to get all those uh, on there at no problem and have some room left over on it so the subscription follows the gateway excellent thank you dale uh, tony complimented you on your great looking dashboard so thanks for the comment tony all right thank you uh, any other questions out there? And I will also, uh, I was trying to post the, uh, or find the whiteboard on Champ, but Champ's down right now. So I will uh, I will get that from you, Dale, so that I can post that on the uh, on the link as well for the, Absolutely. Uh, yep. the training. So when you, uh, yeah, you send us the presentation, if you want to just forward that white, white paper over to us as well, that'd be great. Yep, yep, I'll get you everything you need. And we've got a whole slew of those. So. Uh... You tell me what you need, I'll get it to you. Okay. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll end this uh, presentation. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for your time. And if you got any questions, uh, please reach out to me, AJP at Lesman.com. Thanks, everyone.